Have you noticed that the dating game can be full of unspoken feelings and behind-the-scenes gossip rather than upfront, honest communication? Have you ever had a relationship that you felt was built on complete honesty? Hello, Weirdos! Welcome to your Daily Undead from The Church of the Undead. This is my opportunity to bring you into what I'm doing with my own daily Bible studies or perhaps bring you a short message of hope and encouragement during the week aside from the normal Sunday episodes. Today, I'm bringing you a chapter from the book Energizers – Light Devotions to Keep Your Faith Growing written by Nate Adams. So this is his story, not mine. No, I never dated a girl named Trish. Here's what he wrote. Trish and I were on our first date, and we didn't know each other very well. We found ourselves waiting for our pizza to arrive and not knowing exactly what to do with our nervous hands and eyes. Fortunately, she helped me out by asking about my recent election to the high school student council. There's so much that needs to be done at school, she began with conviction. Why you should see the condition the girls' bathrooms are in. I had to admit that cleaning up the girls' restrooms had not been on my list of campaign promises. There are cigarette butts all over the restroom and it smells horrible, Trish continued, feeling more and more confident that she and I at least had some common political interests to discuss. I wonder if Dr. Martin, our principal, knows how bad the problem is. I tried to inject some levity into the conversation by remarking that I was sure Dr. Martin had spent more time in there than I had. But Trish wasn't to be sidetracked with humor, at least not intentionally. She was on a soapbox. Then it caved in on her. You know, I think that you and Dr. Martin should march into one of the girls' restrooms next week and just smell the butts. Now, this was one of those split seconds that seems to last an eternity when you're in it. She broke off her thought with the realization that she had just said something extremely funny, but a little earthy. Not only did her words have a rather humorous double meaning, but now we both had to deal with the mental image of our distinguished principal and I marching into the girl's room and making certain demands. It was all I could do to restrain myself even for that instant. But as I said, we didn't know each other very well, and I was afraid that if I laughed at her unintentional bathroom humor, she might think me crude and vulgar. Trish, however, bailed me out. After that brief, awkward pause, she threw her face into her hands and squealed, I can't believe I just said that. We both spent several minutes laughing, and then several more minutes speculating on the details of that scene before our pizza arrived. The rest of the date went smoothly and we both had a slight smile on our faces the entire evening. Ruth chapter 3, verses 7-9 through nine says, When Boaz had finished eating and drinking, and was in good spirits, we went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. In the middle of the night something startled the man, and he turned and discovered a woman lying at his feet. "'Who are you?' he asked. "'I am your servant Ruth,' she said." Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a kinsman redeemer. For Boaz to spread his garment over Ruth would mean he accepted her as his wife. Of course, isolating these three verses by themselves makes this seem like a pretty funny proposal of marriage, not exactly the one you may have pictured for your dream girl or guy, right? One of the things that characterized the relationship of Boaz and Ruth, however, was direct honesty. When Ruth and Naomi, the mother of Ruth's deceased husband, realized that Boaz had the legal right and moral responsibility as Naomi's close family member to redeem the family land and marry Ruth, the context of their honest relationship encouraged Ruth to speak openly and boldly. She didn't play games. She didn't try to seduce him there in the middle of the night. She didn't tell her best friend to tell his best friend that she might be interested in him if he were interested in her. She leveled with him and counted on him to level with her. Honesty is so important and rewarding in any relationship. Dating, especially, has plenty of mysteries and uncertainties already. Masking your real self in a role or reputation and making your partner guess what you truly think or feel makes a relationship a difficult maze to navigate. Thank you, Trish, for laughing out loud at the butts in the bathroom. It let me know we could be real with each other and that gave me great freedom to be myself. Would you have laughed? 
How high on the honesty scale are your current relationships, either with dates or with friends or with your spouse? Are you at all confused or uncertain as to where you stand with them because of toying and role-playing? What honest things could you say today that would unleash refreshing realness in your relationships? Again, that's from Energizers, Light Devotions to Keep Your Faith Growing by Nate Adams. I'll place a link to that book in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's message, or if you like Church of the Undead in general, please tell others about us who you think might also want to join in. You can find links to the podcast, the YouTube channel, Facebook page, and more at WeirdDarkness.com slash church. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash church. Thanks for joining me, Weirdos, and until next time, Jesus loves you and so do I. God bless.